Good morning, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. Welcome to our worship service. We want to call you into a spirit of worship. Uh, we know that uh, we have been in a season of election and we want to call your minds and your spirits to a place of solace so we can be prepared to worship. Scripture says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth to all generations. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. For he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry with goodness. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness and greatness towards us. And the truth of the Lord endureth to all generations. Praise the Lord, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. God, we thank you for your miraculous and marvelous power. God, we know that we've just endured an election season, but God, we realize that you are yet and still on the throne. We thank you for your continued protection. And God, we thank you for your continued power and your continued provision. And God, we pray that you have mercy upon this nation. And God, we pray that this next four years pulls us together. God, we pray now that, that you have mercy upon us. And as we enter this virtual and sacred space, God, prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. God, we pray that the songs will inspire someone. We pray that the word will encourage someone. And God, we admonish you, we worship you. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that this worship service be pleasing in your sight. God, we pray again that the Holy Spirit ventures into every home, into every ear, into every eye, and every heart of those who tune in to our virtual worship today. In Jesus' name we pray, let us worship God together by saying amen.
We give honor to the pastor and we thank God for this opportunity to bring you a message today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you have your Bibles, you turn to me with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, the first book of the New Testament. St. Matthew, chapter number five. And while you're getting that, we're going to say a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come thanking you for this another day that you have made. We thank you for an opportunity to stand before these, your people. We ask that you speak through us and say the things that need to be said to get the results that you expect from your children. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Matthew 5, verses 13 through 14, and it reads thusly, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And my subject for this particular scripture today is pass the salt. Pass the salt. Now we all know salt plays an important part in what we eat. And usually doctors tell us to watch our salt intake. However, my brothers and sisters, in this particular scripture, we're talking about being salty. And as children of God, we can't have too much salt. So this is the one diet that you're gonna hear about today that it's all right to load up the salt. I don't know about you, but I know some folk before they even start to eat their food, the first thing they grab is the salt shaker. Well, guess what? That's all right for Christians because we need to be salty saints. So we need to pass our saltiness from one to the other so that all of us can be salty as we do our work for kingdom building. And in this season of political uprisings, black on black crimes, corrupt government officials, high unemployment, and racial injustice, we are faced with questions about our own validity. Our self-esteem could be at an all-time low. Dreams are shattered, and some of us have lost all hope of things getting better. We find ourselves at the crossroad in life questioning our value or our worthiness to even think of a brighter day. So today's message, I hope to give you some encouragement focusing on who, who we are, what our purpose is in life, when and where we must pass the salt, and why we cannot become a saltless disciples. PG, it is important that we stay salty for kingdom building. In this particular scripture, Jesus is saying to his disciples and followers that we are the salt. God sees us as precious. We are valued and valuable to the kingdom. We are the preservers of the way of salvation. We've got to tell the plan of salvation in order to preserve this world. We should be a preserving influence on our culture. Without our godly influence, this world would be spoiled. This plan of salvation is just like salt. There's nothing else like it, and there is no substitute. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There is no substitute. There's only one way to make it to eternal life. Without our witness, the unsaved and the lost have no direction. In verse 14, if you will, Jesus tells us that we're also the light of the world. We, you and I, are responsible for giving direction. For light dispels all darkness. In the physical absence of Jesus on earth, we have been entrusted with being the lighthouse for the lost. I'm glad about it. We must let our light shine so people, before the people, so they will see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. We've got to let our light shine. In fact, Jesus said uh, we would be his witnesses. Over in the book of Acts, chapter 1, it tells the people to, to tell the people everywhere we go about Jesus. Tell them about him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. The Williams brothers said it like this, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. That's how we pass the salt. We've got to be able to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Don't worry about how small you think your witness is. Be a witness anyway. It is our job, it, being a nobody, to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Like Peter in the second chapter of Acts, we must offer Christ to every sinner. We've got to let them know they've got to repent. You know, be baptized and you shall be saved, is what Peter said. John 3.16 makes it plain for all of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the message we have to pass. We've got to pass the salt. That is the salt to salvation. We've got to let them know that Jesus died for their sins, just like he died for yours and mine. We are seasoned with the word of God, and our seasoning is evident in our character, in our conduct, and in our conversation. Yes, our character, our conduct, and our conversation. This passage of scripture today talks about the flavor of the salt. It says, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled. Now this passage is a warning to us saints. If we are the salt and we lose our flavor, or better said, we lose our influence, actions, and preserving qualities because of our character, our conduct, or our conversation, we're no longer valuable to the kingdom of God. It might seem harsh, but this is God's warning to us. He wants us to live as people on a mission for him. We've got to stay on point. And what is our point? Our point is to point people toward salvation. It is our job to evangelize the unsaved and the lost. Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he, meaning you and I, meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and whatever he does shall prosper. My brothers and my sisters, we've got a job to do. We are to carry the message, and we are to walk the message, and we are not only to talk it, but we are to walk it. It is our conduct our character and our conversation. Christian character, Christian conduct, and Christian conversation are the ingredients that retain the saltiness needed to be effective in soul winning. Remember, a little salt flavors a big amount of food. Now we are the salt, and the world is the amount of food that we are trying to season. For an example, 
The recipe for boiling white rice says, for one cup of uncooked rice, add a half a teaspoon of salt to two cups of water in a two quart saucepan. When the cooking time is up, what was one cup has now expanded to three cups, but no additional salt is needed. As the song says, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. In this case, the master's plan, which is the plan of salvation. Jesus wants us to let our little light shine everywhere we go, all in our homes, let our light shine as we stay salty in our mission of soul saving. Be sure that your conversation is free from corruption. Colossians 4 and 6 says, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer one another. And further on in the scripture, Ephesians 4 and 29 says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Remember, once we, the salty saints, we were once in darkness, but now we are the light that we saw in others, and we must walk as children of light. We are the only Bible some folk will ever read. No matter what the circumstance or situation, remember your presence should make a difference. When you walk in a room, your being there should make a difference. This little light of mine should be illuminating so that others can see the Christ and the God in me. God uses us to impact, influence the people around us. He wants us to make a positive impact. Too many negative things are happening and the negative seems to stick where the positiveness theme seems to fall away. But God needs you and me to be positive impacts. The song said that since I met Jesus, there has been a burning deep down within. Do you remember that day when you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Christ and Savior? It changed me from day to day as I walked this narrow way. It's a narrow way, dear friends, but it is the important way. He said, wide is the road to destruction, but narrow is the way to walk for Jesus. Salty saints are called to be different and to live righteous lives. Jesus called his disciples. He told them, you are the salt of the earth. And just as they were called, you and I have been called. Salt symbolizes a deep relationship with God. And he wants us to preserve this earth and flavor this world like crazy. We've got a big assignment. The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. But while we're waiting, don't be discouraged. Don't lose your salt in the saints. We're still relevant and we are necessary for kingdom building. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he, he promised he would strengthen our hearts. So how are you going to be the salt? How are you going to be the light? Back in the day, we used to sing this song almost every time we got together. Good congregational song that says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Then there was a verse that said, Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. And then there's another verse that says, shine, shine, shine. I'm going to let it shine. Our light should be shining bright. There should not be any darkness around us. When we walk into a room, we should illuminate the light of Jesus Christ. Let's be the seasoning for the world, a savory flavor, a flavor of love, a savory a flavor, a flavor of peace and pleasing to the palate, keeping the godly seasoning of salt and the spiritual illumination of light to blot out darkness is the great assignment that only children of God have the ability to carry out. Sinners don't have this responsibility. You and I, we have this responsibility to carry out this assignment. Jesus told his disciples, his followers, 
We are the salt. The world is not the salt. It's you and I. And it is up to us to dispense the salt. Make an impact. Remember, the world is the dark room. You and I, we are the light. We must show them the direction to be saved. They are the uncooked rice. We are the salt. When we sing great change in me, they should be able to see that in us. We carry out our mission to be the, the hymn that we sing about. There has been a great change in me. I'm so happy, I'm so free. Since Jesus brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light, oh, 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 what a great change in me. And then Tremaine Hawkins brought it on up in the 20th century, and she said, changed. He changed my life, and now I'm free to do what must be done. I've got to work and work until he comes. A wonderful change has come over me. A wonderful change has come over me. Since Jesus came into my heart, he made a difference in my life. What about you? We know that Jesus came down from heaven through 42 generations to save a sinner like you and me. Yes, he walked this earth 30 and three years. And the three years that he ministered, he ministered so that we would understand what it takes to reign with him in glory. Yes, that Friday, he hung out on Calvary's cross. They pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water, water for baptism and blood for redemption of our sins. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am redeemed. How do I know I've been washed in the blood of the lamb? I've been, I've been baptized. I confessed with my mouth. I believed in my heart and Jesus has saved me. He'll do the same for you. If you need to know who he is, I'm here to tell you, he's the righteous son of God. He is our Lord and Savior. There's only one way that we can be salty, and that is that we spread the good news and remain on the battlefield, no matter what comes and what goes, regardless of how situations look. Don't lose your saltiness. Saints, I admonish you to stay salty by staying in the word of God. God is, God will be, and he never changes. God bless you is my prayer. Stay salty, saints. God bless you. It's time to worship through giving. Give online at pgmbcstl.org or mail in your tithes and offering at the address below. Hopefully the word was relevant and relatable. If you'd like to connect to Christ through our church, shoot us an email at ghpruitt at gmail.com. We are always excited to reaffirm our relationship with you. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram.